Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 28 and in this video I'm gonna show you all the new changes I spotted in the first two weeks of July. Before starting let me remind you that the wallpaper and my Amazon affiliate links are in the description below so if you want to support the channel that will be really appreciated. And now let's take a look at what's new with Google Apps. I will start with Google Photos and the first change is in the font. Now the app is using Google Sans instead of the old Roboto and if you want to confirm if your app got the new font or not, simply go to the search and then type the letter Q in caps. If you see it exactly the same as the one I have here, that means you got it, but if it's similar to the one in Gboard, that means that your app is still using the older font. And also I will show you here a side-by-side -side comparison between the two fonts in more letters to get a clear idea. This new change makes the whole app looks different but in a good way. The second change in Google Photos is under Memories. When you open any one and then tap the three dots at the bottom right corner, you will see a new option called Save Memory to Album. When you tap on it, it will give you the option to create a new album or add the photos to an existing one you have. When you tap on New Album, it will automatically use the name of the memory as the album name and it will also add the date between parentheses so you can use this automated name or use your own if you want. So by this you can create a new album from your memory in a matter of seconds. The third change in Google Photos is under sharing. Now you will see a different icon for the share photos with a partner feature. Next, Google Photos on the web can now copy text from images with the help of Google Lens. When you open an image that includes text like this one, you will see a small chip at the top right corner says copy text from image. When you click on it, it will show you a sidebar with all the text available. From here, you can use your mouse to select the text you want. And as you see, when I select text from the sidebar, it will reflect on the image itself. There is a button to select all text at once or deselect all and a copy text button that you can use instead of the keyboard shortcuts and finally if you are using Android 12 you will see the new bounce animation when you reach the end of your scrolling next YouTube and the first change is in the home page at the top you will see a new filter called new to you this filter when you tap on it it will use a colorful fill color instead of the dark gray color like others and it will also surface content similar to what you already watch but from different content creators that might be new to you the second change in YouTube is the new create button that looks like a camera with a music icon next to it. This button will allow you to create a YouTube short of 15 seconds and use the audio track coming from this video instead of adding music or your own voice. Once you tap on create and then start recording, please give it a try. And now let's move on to the comparison. The you can hear the sound is coming out of the video I chose and by this I can shoot my own video and add both together and create a YouTube short. The page you see over here is exactly the same one you get when you start creating a YouTube short. From here you can flip the camera, change the video speed, add a countdown timer, undo, redo and so on. I do like the feature but I'm not sure what's gonna happen if I used someone else's audio track. Would I get a copyright claim against my channel? So I need to read more about this to understand but for now I think it's safer to use your own content. The third feature I'm gonna show you is very useful. It will allow you to watch the same YouTube video in different languages. So for example here's a video from Mr. Beast and when I play the video As you heard, everything is in English as you would expect, but I can change the audio track to Spanish by tapping the three dots over here. And then I have audio track. When I tap on it, I have the Spanish option. Then I hit play. So as you heard, everything now is in Spanish. I would like to thank Morgan GJ for bringing this up in one of the comments on my previous episode and he also shared the video link with me. After researching about this feature for a long time, I found it to be only available for a small number of content creators because it's under testing. Plus, this audio track is not auto-generated, but it requires the content creator to upload the voice over to YouTube for the feature to work. So I hope Google will roll out this feature very soon to all content creators because this will allow me to create Arabic videos by just changing the audio track instead of creating a different channel and I'm sure a lot of content creators will agree with me. Last but not least, there is another option here called Clip. This option will allow you to share a specific part of any video like this on your channel and the visibility is always set to public. Once you choose the part you want, you can give it a name like this and the share clip button will be activated. And as per the description, it says 
A clip is a short, looping part of a video or live stream. It's like a GIF with sound. Want to create your own clip? Watch any video that allows clipping, then tap clip below the video. Clips you create show up in your library. So it's similar to the create option, but instead of putting your own video, you will share the clip as it is. And it also requires the content creator to activate the feature on the channel. Before jumping to the next category, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, cdkoffers.com. From CDK Offers, you can purchase original Microsoft Windows 10 and Office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can also use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $16.18, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. Now let's get back to the review. Next, YouTube Music. And now you can search for songs in your own library, not only on YouTube Music, by using the search at the top. So for example, I'm gonna search for an artist, and as you see here, I have a separate tab called Library. And when I go there, I can find all the songs related to my search query in my own library. Here's the artist name, here are the albums and the songs. And when I tap on the artist name, I will get another button here called See All by Artist. And when I tap on it, it will take me to the artist page on YouTube Music. Next, Google Chrome. And it got a new feature called the continuous search navigation. So let me show you how it works. Let's say you searched for something on google.com and you got multiple search results and you tapped on any of them. As you see here, I'm getting at the top a carousel named search results. This carousel includes all the search results I had in the previous page and I can quickly jump from here to the different search results and instead of going back to the original page and that will make your life a lot easier while using chrome this feature is not activated by default however all you need to do is to go to chrome flags by typing chrome colon two forward the slashes and then the word flags from here you need to search for continuous search navigation and change the value to enabled then it will ask you to relaunch google chrome once done, the feature will be activated. But keep in mind that the feature doesn't always work. So for example, in my case, the carousel disappeared on its own. And even when I go back to the same search results and use another website, the carousel showed up and then disappeared really quick. But I found that starting by tapping on a website related to Google works the best. So as you see here, when I tapped on a Google website, the carousel is working perfectly fine. But when I start by using any third party website, it doesn't show up. I'm personally a big fan of this feature and I hope to see it fully functional on Google Chrome very soon. Next, keep notes. And now you can add different backgrounds to your notes to make them stand out. So for example, I'm gonna create a new one. And as you see, there is a new button here that looks like a palette that you can use to add the background. It will first show you the same solid colors as before, but on top of this, you will get eight different backgrounds to choose from. So I'm gonna pick this one as an example and then add some text. Go back to the home page, And as you see here, the background is showing. Also, the menus inside your notes will adapt with the color of your background. So for example, this background is using a green color and that's why the menus are now green. But if I change the background to a pink one, as you see, they are now pink. But I'm not sure if the menu color changed because I'm using Android 12 or it will work the same on Android 11. So if you know the answer, please let me know in the comments. Next, Google Lens. And it got some visual tweaks. The first one is the new camera viewfinder at the top. And as you see here, it gives you a live preview of your camera. You can access the full view by either tapping on this button or use the swipe gestures. You can either swipe down to expand or swipe up to collapse and access your gallery. You will first see the most recent screenshots you have with the view all button and then all your images will be stacked on top of each other. You will also see other visual tweaks when you start searching an image. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. As you saw, there is a new zoom out animation that will show you the image in full size. Let me show you this again. Here you go. And then you will find the most relevant options to choose from in a bigger font instead of giving you the old carousel like before. And when you start using your hand to copy text, that's when you see the same old carousel as before. So you can copy to computer, listen, translate, and so on. And if you want to search the image again, 
tap on search image and it will take you back to the same view and when you tap on anything else other than text you will get the option to crop and choose which part exactly you want to search for and the results will appear below so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i spotted in google apps in the first two weeks of july so i hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching